Hello, we are back. We are back today with doing Mary Mantle's consecration. And there are 46 days because there are 46 stars in her mantle. Today we are on day 38. And it's the star of justice, which is a very important star. Justice is very important. Sometimes we think we're entitled to be the one giving the justice when we got to be careful with that because God wants us to um, help, but not to judge. Right. Do it in a loving way. And sometimes it's a balance. He wants us to discern. He yes. wants us to discern, hard but not judge. I have a really hard time with um, judging, which is not really justice, but justice is like, it's we'll see. It's, it is. It's yeah. Together. We'll see. Okay. So. We're going to read about just. Oh, wait, let me just say, um, this is the 38th star here. There's a link below if this is the first time you're seeing us. And it tells you the science behind Mary's mantle, which it could not have been made by men. And her eyes are microscopic. They just discovered recently. And so uh, there's a there's an article about the the facts of the science. They tested the fabric. There's no way it could have been man made. So read that below. Okay, Jeanette, go ahead. I'm sorry. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Luke 4, 16, 20. When Jesus rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant and sat down, the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. In the pivotal moment of human history, who was Jesus concerned for? When a man is wrongfully imprisoned because of the color of his skin, the, that person touches, breathes, and imbibes injustice. When a woman works long hours away from her unsupervised children but still cannot feed them, she lives without reprieve in the worry and despair of injustice. When a young girl is sold into sexual slavery, she is strapped to a pillar and whipped by injustice. They have no voice. Jesus unrolled the scroll and said, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Luke 4.21 In other words, today and from this moment forward, I am your voice. A voice that echoes through time in the months of the Lord's disciples, mm -hmm. in the mouth of the Lord's disciples. These are the disciples who speak words of golden hope for the mute and unheard, the imitators of the one who stands in defense of the homeless, the poor, the unborn, the elderly, the children, the sick, the mentally ill, the abused. These are the tall trees with sacred roots in whose canopy of welcoming branches, delicate birds take up their nest. These men and women know that in whatever state of life they find themselves, they are God's children before all else. They are not doctors who are Catholic, but Catholics who are doctors. They are not mothers who are Catholic, but Catholic mothers. Their yes, is a song in God's ear when the world falls silent and their no is a spear in God's hand when the world sleeps with its enemy. To every task, they bring a supernatural outlook 
and to every person, God's love. They follow where Christ leads them, even if it may cost them their very lives. All of this they do because love and justice demands it. They have unrolled and read the scroll, and God's voice is theirs. Wow. Yes. This, yes. you know, this, we are today's disciples. We need to remember this every day as we go out there and live our lives. You know? And we need to speak up when we see injustice. And yes. when it hits you personally and it goes into your bones, you learn about justice. Uh, trust me, I know. Um, and I was in a crime um, and uh, court, American courts, um, we want justice. And crime victims often don't get full justice. They may get some, but they don't get full justice. Um, sometimes their perpetrators don't go to prison. Maybe they go for a year. Maybe they destroyed someone's life. They might go for a year when, when they deserve life. And unfortunately, uh, you know, the laws, depending on the political party, they decide, um, uh, you know, sentences. And right now, people in California are uh, all of these Democrat cities, Detroit, all of them. They are people are being robbed and beaten in the streets and their perpetrators are getting right out on the on the um on the street. And we live in a Republican state, but we need to speak up for those that are experiencing injustice like that. Um, and there is one man who is trying to speak for all of us. And the elite, the people, the liberals don't want anybody to speak for the the um, vulnerable. They want the vulnerable to sit down, shut up and give their money um, because that's the way they believe. Um, and we want one of the reasons why we've all stood behind this person, Trump, is because we want justice. For years and years and years, I used to say, why vote? It doesn't matter. They're all corrupt. Republicans were in bed with Democrats. They didn't do any difference. Trump has come and changed that. He said, no, you guys are going to stop padding your pockets. It's going to be for the people. And a lot of people don't like that. And he also said the injustice for the babies that are not allowed a voice and they're getting killed. And that law, Roe versus Wade, was it was uh, based on injustice. The real person that that happened with, she never got the abortion. The baby was born and she was against Roe versus Wade. The end of her life, she tried to tell everybody about it, but she was shut up by the media. Whenever they're trying to shut someone up, that's the person you need to listen to. Because if they're trying to shut them up, it's because they don't want you to find something out. Remember that. Justice, everyone deserves. Do you know how many, um, uh, how much they abuse that? They say, oh, well, we're for reform. So that's what we're doing. No, they're for chaos. So they are releasing real criminals and call it reform. No, there are innocent black men that have no money to get experts to come in and um, and plead their case. What can you do about it? You can give money to the Innocence Project because the Innocence Project, they take the details of each case and they will find everything that that person couldn't afford, the experts, and they help them with that. So if you, if you feel that the world is unjust and you can't do anything about it, but you have a little bit of extra money, give to things like the Innocence Project. Yes, there are Democrats running it, but guess what? God works through everybody and he will help find the innocent threads of that person's case. And some people have been in prison for 20 years for something that they didn't do. And it's so unfair. That's why the prison is a great place. I'm not saying you have to go there. Jeanette's husband said she's not allowed to do that, um, which I don't blame him because he loves her and he protects her. She's like, we should go do that. 
I was I wanted to and he's like no so we can't do that but we can send rosaries you can you can get someone who does a a prison ministry and give them rosaries there's always creative ways to find to do to help those people that are experiencing injustice if you can't personally get up front and close to it or it's a trigger there are certain things for people who have been through a crime that are triggered and they can't even think about it but you can go and and give you know give to a shelter if 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 you you know someone um that has had injustice maybe a um you know sexual abuse or domestic violence or whatever you can go give to a sexual abuse foundation like rain that teaches about that or you can go and give money to a shelter where uh, where victims go to um maybe at christmas time get toys together and and or 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 um toys or us cards and take them to the shelters for the children because they're they're out of their home because of domestic violence so give them some and if toys you want, at christmas yeah and if you want to make a difference but you don't really know where to start or what to do you know just talk to someone in your church just call and just say you know i'd like to i'd like to see what what um things are out there that maybe i can help yeah, out this with particular group. i mean there's so many ways that we can in um, every help church. somebody even in if we have a little extra time yeah in every church there's they have mission projects yeah there's a lot of ministries there's a lot of little ones like going to read you know in um in an elderly home or going to visit or you know you don't have to um do what Wait a minute. I'm not hearing. Um, I don't. And help out somehow. If you see somebody, a homeless Jeanette, person. Go back a minute because my my internet froze. So I don't know if it taped. Go back a minute. What you just said. Oh, I don't. What did I say? Oh, that you can. Um, if you don't know where to start and you want to help out, but you don't know where to really start, um, you can talk to somebody at church. You can talk to. Um, someone that you know at church that is active or after mass, you ask the priest as you're leaving, hello, you know, nice, to, you know, you had a good home right to mass. You say, you know, I was looking into maybe um, doing something and it was great, you know, and maybe he'll talk to you there and then or else, you know, you can also look we'll on the bulletin. Give you someone's number. <laughs> he'll say, yeah, talk, on to, the bulletin. talk to Deacon Pete or on the bulletin, a list of or yeah, he'll give things. you something. So yeah, that's a place to get started. Or yeah. if you're not going to church, whatever, you can go to the Salvation Army or anywhere. And you can, well, or you can even look it up online. Yeah, know? but you want to stay connected to the church because that is God's kingdom that we are building. So better that you stick with the church because... Um, some of the leftist organizations that, you know, you do, you want to be careful, stick with the church. Um, they're always doing something, but I'm not saying don't give to a shelter and all, but if you're, if, if you have no idea where to start, Jeanette's right. The church is a good place to go. If you're too intimidated to do that, there a shelter. If you're worried about domestic violence that can never go to waste no matter if it's a democrat running or whatever there are people in there that are that need help uh, maybe if you make blankets give them to the shelters because children come in those places and they're there they they leave all their toys behind give your old toys to the to the shelters um give give blankets that you make because they will um comfort a little child leaving their home in violence and coming in and they want to be warm and, and feel safe you know put god's message in a blanket to surround that child that just left their home maybe maybe their parent is are, are not don't tell them about god and you can give them a little something so use your talents use your you know if you collect things collect things like that to give to to shelter there's just so many ways to help
people that are experiencing injustice, if it's money or things or time, you you can you can and you can pray if you can't do anything you could do spiritual warfare i'll link it below do you know how powerful prayer is especially when you pray with someone else grab a friend and say let's do spiritual warfare together like jeanette and i did we were praying for millions and millions of people there's always something you can do for someone who's experiencing injustice we can't just say that evil is going to take over the world and there's nothing we can do talk about the and we all world. have and we all have a friend that is like mother Teresa. we all have one that is like all over the place ours ours is jean she's all over the place she's always doing something doing good. for some ministry and she's asking constantly she's collecting like, coats yeah, she's collecting coats. She brings them to, she comes herself with a ton of coats when it gets cold in the cold weather and goes to the bus stops, goes to the post office and looks for the homeless and gives them coats. She's amazing. That girl's going to heaven. And, you know, if it's raining, she has extra umbrellas. She'll give it to and, whoever and she she's, at the bus she's stop. She's 15 years yeah. older than me. She has no she's, excuses. She's, she's just amazing. one of those and people. Now, and now she's collecting bikes, even bikes that, you know, she's like, if you know anybody that has a broken bike, whatever. That. She never yeah, sent she, me that thing. I was going to put a thing up she, on next door for her. She says, if you know anybody that has a broken bike, you know, I'm I'm looking for bikes now because I have this project for the um, women that have no jobs, for the women that are on their own and that, you know, and and they have no way to get to work and we're making bikes for them and we're giving them bicycles and and so it's like she always has something going on, you know, and she's amazing. And so if you have a friend like that, ask her, what are you doing lately? You know, are you uh, what's your, you know, what are you collecting? What are you doing? And you also know people and you can spread the word if anybody has bikes or if anybody has, she's looking for something else. I forgot what it was. It was um, I just text her that she forgot was, to send me the ad when you have something ADD else some other ministry she's helping at the moment and then she was helping the um one um it was a special i forgot the name but it was a special place for the um people to come and get medical help and at the same time it was like a parish it was like a church so she's the one that decorated it she was looking for things from people if anybody had anything like a picture or the injustice or of poverty or, the injustice of poverty she's always out there so you you guys have a friend like that reach out to her and say hey and you know, also i want to get a fall on something also there's a single mom that wants to work and she can't uh she can't afford to be away from her kids or whatever maybe maybe pull up a bunch of your friends and say, we'll watch that baby one hour. We'll do, you know, I'm saying you could be creative. Maybe there's a single mom that just needs a break to go out and, and, and go to the spa or, you know, maybe they can't afford a spa if they're in poverty, but maybe she just wants to, to have an hour to herself offer to babysit. Um, I have a friend, walk someone's dog, yeah. whatever. I have a very good friend. She was a sister to me. I love her so much. I miss her. She's in heaven right now. She, um, she. Well, we she don't know. Was, she, is. she could be in purgatory. We don't know. No, I'm pretty sure she went straight to heaven. She was a walking saint. I mean, we would go to breakfast every now and then because she knows how much I love breakfast. She'll say, Jeanette, you know, we haven't seen each other in so long. Let's do breakfast. I'm like, yeah. When? Where? <laughs> no more breakfast. And, and so and so we go and have breakfast together and oh my gosh then during the breakfast she would recognize someone that was in the, the veteran this one group it was like a bunch of um it was a big family with kids and all and there was a veteran there yeah i mean i think he was wearing a cap or something that said it and she went she said excuse me um while we were done almost done eating and she went over to the table. She didn't tell us what she was doing or anything. She went over to the table. We kind of looked at her like, she okay, does she know this? I mean, uh, does, what, what, what's she doing? Do, you know, does she know these people? I'm thinking to myself, but no, she went up to the table and she said a little something to him and said, thank, thank you so much service. for your service. And, yeah. you know, this is on me. Don't even bother. It's all taken care of. And she would pay for the whole meal. Yeah. And the guy would say, no, no, we can't. It's a big family. No, I, no, no, please, please let me do this for you. Please. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, she would do that all the time. Yeah. And she was not well off. Right. She wasn't. Right. 
but she would do that. And, and you can I, do it, and you can do it for a homeless person or a single mom. You can do those things at any time. You can for say anybody. I'm paying for your groceries this week, or give. I've had that done to me. Car. I've had that done to me when I'm, you know, when I'm short. <laughs> I'm short some change or something. Someone's like, "Oh no, I got it. I got it here." Or you yeah. know, a, a couple of times they bought my iced tea at Dunkin' Donuts. They said, "Okay, you know that." You know, that person before you just paid for, you know, the person, but whatever. If, if you, wow. you can you can just get five or ten dollar gift uh, like Publix cards and take them to a homeless shelter and give them to people. They they can't yes. buy alcohol with them. Or when you see people, in, you know, waiting there, when you see people in the road stopping you for something, instead of giving them money, thinking, oh, my gosh, where's it going to go to booze? Give them a five or ten dollar. You know, we feel card. And we do. Right. Give them a card, a public's card. The injustice of poverty is real, and you can help those people, especially a single mom that can't afford, you know, you know, even to to do much. Um, so just there's so many creative ways yes. to help. You we can't just give up and say, oh, there's so much injustice. There's nothing I can do. We we all have our little way. What does um Saint Teresa of Lisieux say? The little way. And Saint Saint uh, Calcutta, the Saint Teresa of Calcutta, you could do small things. One person at a time. Yeah, and you could do small things. Uh, with great love. With great love. There you go. So, justice. It's it. Yes. We can be a part. So that's of the it. word. We can be a. That's part the word of today. It. Remember to be more. This word, justice, to have it more in your life, more. Overlook things sometimes. How so what have you stacked out? How can you, you help in a that, little tiny way? You know, for that one person, for that one person, you will make the world of difference. And you don't know what you have prevented That's from right. standing up. You don't know what you actually did to help them until you go to heaven and they show it to you. So anyway. And you know so, what? Yeah, if someone is experiencing injustice and you tell them, I'm praying for you, like someone in the court system when it's beyond their control. Um, I remember they, there was someone who, um, uh, there was um, something, I, I think it was, I think it was her husband or whatever, and he had molested the kids or whatever, and, and she was asking everyone to pray because the courts aren't always just, and they don't, they can't, they're, they're not psychic they don't know they can only go by evidence and some people don't do well in court especially single moms and those criminals that do those bad things are very crafty people so they know how to make so what could you do for that person you could say i'm praying for you do you know how much comfort you will give someone that says i have a thousand people there's a girl that has uh cancer right now a, a single mom one of her kids is autistic and um, she's not religious. She grew up in a Baptist family. But I had, I got, uh, I think it's Danielle Novenas or whatever. I got her to put her up without her name that, because she's going to die. She's stage four. I sent her the Fenbendazole things. I sent her the Budwig thing. And I also uh, got uh, about 200 people praying for her. And even someone who doesn't believe in God, she was thankful. She she does she she had a bad experience because they she came from a Baptist family and you know she had a bad experience about church. So I said a hundred like almost two hundred people are praying for you. Every person there's a little beam of light going up. You have two hundred and it makes it huge. Remember in the NDEs where the person said, um, "For every prayer was a beam of light coming from Earth." Uh, the beam of light was coming from earth and going straight up to God with the prayer. Well, if you have a hundred or 200 little tiny beams of light together going up to God, it, it, it's huge. So if you can only pray for someone and tell them you're praying for them. If, if you walk into a store, I remember I walked into the Circle K and this girl was just so upset about something. It had to do with money. And, you know, I could tell she doesn't, she's working in a store. She was so upset and, and I couldn't, and, and, and I kept wanting to say something and, and, but I couldn't because I knew she wouldn't receive it well, 
Well, I just saw her the other day and this was, I said, you know, I saw you a few months ago and I wanted to tell you, you know, God loves you and he's, and he is pulling for you. Um, I could tell that she was a lesbian or whatever. And I, I told her, I said, I just want you to know that God wants you to know he loves you. Because a lot of times those people are in disordered sexual lives because they've maybe been abused by a man or they have uh, had bad experiences and I, and, and they're lacking love. And I, and God kept trying to tell me to talk to her and I just, I, I knew it would not be received. I just couldn't. So I told her, I said, you know, I, the Holy Spirit was prompting me to tell you that God loves you that day. But I said, I felt like you couldn't, wouldn't be able to hear it that day. I said, so I don't know if you remember. And so I told her, God loves you. And he's thinking of you when you're in your most horrible times. And he saw you and he was thinking of you then. But I was scared to tell you. I said, but I want you to know that. She said, oh my gosh, she was so touched. And you don't know, she might go home and be thinking and maybe saying, oh, God was thinking of me when I was having this terrible time. You don't know how God is facilitating through you. Just like that time I walked through the park and God kept telling me to tell her about that cardiac uh, book, that um, metabolic cardiac book. And he's telling me, tell her. And I was like, I don't want to tell her. I don't want to tell her. But I did. I walked up to her and I said, God wants me to tell you about this book. And she said, oh my gosh, I just had cardiac surgery, blah, blah, blah. So I gave her the name, the Sinatra Solution. And you don't know how God is using you. The more you pray, the more he will be using you for people who are experiencing injustice, who are going through bad times and they just need someone to pray for. And it's all about loving and it's all about loving your neighbor. It's all about love, and caring. Speak up. It's just a word. Also, if it's just a con, it has cute earrings. I do it all the time. <gasps> I love your earrings. They are amazing. I love them. Where'd you get them at? Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. They're very special to me. It just makes somebody's day. And then the rest of the day, she'll be thinking, oh, my gosh, my but earrings. Be for, you know, real. That this is be for real. You of have course, to love her earrings. Of course. Yeah. I'm always but for don't real. Don't be afraid to <laughs> don't be afraid to give a compliment. Don't be yeah, afraid. Yeah, people to, love it. You know it. that you know that lady might be having a really bad day, then all of a sudden yeah. she remembered, "Oh, wow." You know. Or or but if anyway. you notice someone's name tag and they have a really pretty name, I'm like, "Oh, that's such a pretty name. How do you pronounce it?" Yeah. You know, people love to tell their story. People love for people to pay attention to them and they're not just a cashier in a store. You know, you want to tell them you see them as people, you know, because exactly. they're, they're they're having a hard time or whatever. Everybody is going through something. Be yeah. uplifting to others. Anyway, great. Exactly. Okay, great guys. Start. So that's our word for today. Don't forget your rosary and have a beautiful, beautiful day. We love you. God loves you. Bye. Bye.